on to the announcement. At ChartIQ, we're firm believers in both open source software, which our products, like almost anything involving the web, are based on, and collaboration, which is why we offer full source access to all our clients using Finsomble. Ultimately, we also believe that the best way to stay secure is to be open and transparent about how we approach security on the desktop and to collaborate with a community that shares the same goals and benefits from the same work. Hence, today, we're thrilled to announce the Secure Electron Adapter, or SEA for short, which uses the same code and approach that we do in the Finsomble Electron Adapter that ships with Finsomble, and that we've contributed that to Finos, the FinTech Open Source Foundation, and of course, our hosts today. SEA adheres to Electron's own security recommendations by design, including enabling context isolation, removing direct access to node, um, disabling and or filtering the remote module, et cetera, and provides a ready to use system for policy-based security in Electron with inter-process comms that uh, work with that security to ensure that your renderer processes can do what they need to do and no more. You can get your hands on SEA as you'd expect from Finnis's GitHub at the addresses shown, where you'll find two repositories for SEA, one containing the main SEA module and a second containing the SEA Quick Start project. That, now, that's a minimal Electron app using SEA. We'll have a look at it in a minute. And it's, it's based on the Electron Quick Start guide for inspiration. And it demonstrates the basics of using SEA, including a sample manifest file, uh, some comp configured components and preloads for customizing your windows. The most important thing to note about SEA is that it is config driven by a manifest file, an example of which you'll find in the SEA Quick Start project, which was shown here. The manifest is used to configure the main window, which is loaded from a remote application, a remote location even. And as we learned earlier, it should probably be loaded via a secure transport and from a trusted location only. Now, that can be a visible window or a non-visible one to be used more like a service to manage your application. That's actually the approach we use in Finsomble. And it can have additional content preloaded into it, which is JavaScript functions that you're essentially adding to the window. Next, you can configure other windows or components of your desktop app. These are also loaded from remote locations and, again, can be visible windows or hidden ones. That will allow you to build application components or your own desktop services. And they can have permissions specified on them, giving them you fine grained control over what each of those components is able to do. For example, this untrusted component has been denied access to system APIs for clearing the cache or exiting the runtime, as well as having its access to certain JavaScript functions and Chromium web preferences detailed. Finally, you can set overall preferences for the Electron adapter, such as a list of trusted preloads, which can then be applied to the components in the main window. So on to a demo. Now, we're going to try and do this live, so fingers crossed. Um, here's my VS code, where I've got the SEA Quick Start project loaded up. Um, I'm showing the index.html file. We're going to use this for a number of different components. We're going to use the same uh, file for brevity and sort of to prove the uh, security policies use case. Our manifest that you've already seen is here, along with um, those components. As you can see, we're using index.html, add in a preload, and in the case of the untrusted child, having some permissions set on them. Our preload just contains some functions we want to add into the window. Um, it's a great way to add APIs for your services. And finally, uh, this renderer.js file, which is loaded into index.js to do something interesting with SEA. For example, we can get a reference to the current window um, or version information or monitor information for the system. Um, and we could also use that current window to do things like um, moving a window around so we could get the bounds for the uh, for that window, we can set the bounds to actually move it. Well, we could also use the SEA main process to get hold of the manifest to give us details of other components and actually launch other windows. So let's try this out. I've already installed my dependencies at npm, so we'll start her up 
And here we go. This is our main window. It's visible in this case. And you can see we can do things with it. It's rendering some details about its current bounds, the monitor information, etc. And I can launch a trusted application, which is here. Uh, same index file, it's just um, picking up its own name. And again, it can do all the usual things, including exiting the runtime. So let's just start that up one more time. So here he is again. This time I'm going to launch the untrusted child application, which is here. And this one, as I mentioned, has been denied the permission to exit the runtime. So if I hit exit, nothing happens. And if I go ahead and launch a JavaScript console, you can actually see we're getting an error message back from SEA whenever we hit that button. Um, access is denied to system.exit. So there's our security policy in action.